to talk about uh, introduction to cryptocurrency first, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Horizon and privacy. And I'm going to go ahead and record this so that we can play it later if you want also. Sound good? Oh okay, yeah, here we go. So cryptocurrency is a new idea. And a lot of people don't understand the difference between currency and gold and uh, wealth. So um, I was looking up what the Nigerian Naira, the history of that is, and see how its value has changed over time, especially over the last few years. But for hundreds of years, even thousands of years, gold has been money, and people still treat gold as money. Wealth is different. Wealth is what you know, who you know, your track record, your capabilities, the free time that you have, the wealth that you have, and the liberty that you have. So I'll talk a little bit about the U.S. dollar. Everybody ends up intersecting with the U.S. dollar in the world. It's not money. It's only currency. And it used to be uh, based on gold 100 years ago, but now it isn't. And so... Um, here in the United States, we use dollars and they buy less and less every year. I'm sure that you all are familiar with that. And the currency that we use, which is made by government, is difficult to use. It's difficult to send from one place to another. Even with things like Western Union or money transfer, uh, it still has to go through many different trusted people like banks or your local corner store where you receive money uh, from overseas and people know that you're getting money. It's not a good thing. And so the Nigerian Naira, it's a currency. It's not money. And it's just paper. It's not gold. And the government can print as much paper as they want. And even if it weren't paper, um, you know, if, if it was backed by something like real, like gold, it wouldn't keep losing its value. Here's a chart of how the Naira value changes over time. Is everything coming through good on the presentation? Yeah? All right, we'll keep going. If you wanted to learn more about Bitcoin, which has been around for 10 years today, Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency, um, and it it uh, you can go to this website and see a video I won't play the video now but it's a very good two-minute video that shows you how to use uh, what cryptocurrency is all about and how it can be used it's a great starting point now Bitcoin is a better currency than any of the currency that's backed by dollars or backed by governments and it may be money. A very good book to read is called The Bitcoin Standard. And it's a book that talks about how um, Bitcoin is similar to gold in many ways and could be better than gold. And we may be entering into a new worldwide standard of how Bitcoin will be what all money is measured against or all currencies are measured against just like currencies used to be measured against gold. So, um, and it has a lot of different characters, but one of the biggest things is you don't have to trust anybody. You don't have to trust a bank. You don't have to trust uh, someone to, with your money. You do have to learn how to use Bitcoin safely uh, so you don't lose it and any type of system that you use you should back up your Bitcoin app your Bitcoin wallet so it's easy to use cryptocurrency once you understand it um, so here for example is a picture of me with my Coinomi wallet uh, with my horizon so you could scan this picture and you could send me money in fact uh, Sandy, I sent you some Zen uh, last week and you got it pretty quickly. And uh, there's many different ways to get cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'll talk about why Zen is a good one to use uh, next, but you can earn it. You can buy it from someone else. You can exchange it at an uh, automatic teller machine. And uh, 
you can hold it in your wallet application. Uh, this Just this last weekend, I was at a Bitcoin conference and I was talking with a man who operates Bitcoin ATMs. He says many people uh, really like to use Bitcoin ATMs because they have lots of dollar bills uh, that they carry around and they're able to just convert it into Bitcoin and carry it around much easier. So Bitcoin is now 10 years uh, old. It's great as a cryptocurrency. There's other cryptocurrencies that uh, have some better features. And I'll talk a little bit about what, what the Horizon Project is and why it has some better features than Bitcoin. And so let's talk about that. Um, the problem with Bitcoin is it's not private. You can see every single transaction on Bitcoin. And um, so by having everybody able to see the transactions on, Bit on the Bitcoin blockchain, over time, people may be able to figure out what you're spending and what you're not. So let's move on and uh, we'll talk a little bit about Horizon. So give me a second All right. to share this screen and we'll move on over to what Horizon is and I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, so Horizon is a project that I helped found about a year and a half ago specifically to make cryptocurrency easy for people to use, reliable, and to be private. It used to be called Zencash. Um, we changed the name from Zencash to Horizon about four months ago. So if you're familiar with cryptocurrencies and you heard of Zencash, um, you know that we have a, a name change. And we have a tagline, bringing privacy to life. So we bring privacy to your life uh, and the ability to send and receive cryptocurrencies. So, um, what is it? Well, we took some ideas and inspiration from other cryptocurrency projects that are out there. So Horizon has its own blockchain. It's not a token. It's a proof of work uh, blockchain. So that means that there's miners that mine it to keep it secure. It uses a new technology called zero knowledge proofs. Zero knowledge proofs uh, help maintain privacy. And when Horizon is sent from a wallet using shielded transactions. You can't see what address it was sent from or sent to or even how much was sent except by the person who sent it or received it. Uh, we're also working to have the project be completely decentralized so that it's resistant to um, big companies and big governments and we take ideas from Bitcoin, from Zcash, from Dash. From Dash, we took the idea of having a treasury where we get funds every month so we can pay software developers to make the project better. And voting, so liquid democracy, I'll talk a little bit more about that. And from Ethereum, to be able to do applications on the system. So a little bit about me uh, before I co-founded Horizon. I am an engineer, so electrical engineer and nuclear engineer. And when I worked for Cisco Systems and after that, when I started my business, I became a data network and network security engineer. Uh, was an officer in the Navy on a submarine, a nuclear submarine, and I uh, do cryptocurrency mining. I have uh, some, bi some buildings with many miners in them. And when I first helped to start Zen, uh, I did many different videos. You can still see those videos on the YouTube channel for Horizon. It's not just me though. We have many different people and organizations that we work with. Uh, so my co-founder, co Rob Viglioni, right now he's in Italy. Uh, and so is our uh, chief architect, Alberto Garofolo. We also have people who uh, work on uh, software development, many different people. They're building wallets or the systems that allow for uh, 
uh, tracking and paying the people that operate nodes. We have information technology people that run our systems, marketing and graphics uh, artists, as well as social media uh, people. Accounting, we have accounting is important. We have an attorney, so be, we have many different things that we need to do with legal uh, aspects. And then we have business development people. These are people that go all over or that are in different parts of the world that work with local organizations and local meetup groups and local merchants to work to get them to use uh, Horizon in their day-to-day -day operations. We have partnerships with research and development teams out of uh, Ukraine. Ukraine uh, and we have some big improvements that, we're, that we have planned. Uh, we also have C++ developers that we work with um, for doing uh, improvements to our technology. We have large investment groups that work with us, like the Digital Currency Group, and they allow uh, people to invest in the future of Horizon. We're on many different exchanges. I don't know that we're on any exchanges in Africa yet, but uh, I do know that we're on more than 30 cryptocurrency exchanges and we also have integration to point of sale so if you wanted if you're a merchant that wanted to be able to accept zen uh, at your business you're able to do that now why does horizon exist well privacy is very important uh, to be able to do the things that you want to do with uh, your life with your family with your religion you you need to have privacy so pe other people can't always figure out what you're doing. And so a good place to start for uh, what kind of privacy and liberty and freedoms people should have is the, I figure, the United States Constitution where it has the Bill of Rights. It talks about specifically the rights that people have that are God-given rights that the state can't take away. And so these are just a listing of some of them. It's important to be able to continually work to maintain your rights and keep um, other people and other organizations from taking away those rights. Everybody wants privacy. Uh, even if you say you have nothing to hide, people want privacy. Uh, it gives the individual person the right to disclose things about their own life and what they do. And one of the things, one of the ways that um, is used to control people is by tracking what their spending habits are. And so for a government or a electronic currency, it's much easier to track what people spend their funds on. So one of the things that people do is to contribute uh, to their religious organization. You know? So we'd like to have privacy for that. There are uh, medicines that people use uh, here in America, a big one is cannabis that in some places are legal and some places are not legal. Uh, buying weapons like guns, people usually prefer to keep those purchases private. And then donations, even charitable donations. And if you have a, a relationship with somebody, uh, maybe you want to keep that relationship private. And businesses need to have privacy when they spend, when they send or receive money. Uh, to be able to maintain a competitive advantage. So you, for how much uh, businesses pay their employees, the sales that they make to, uh, from, uh, to their customers and to the suppliers that they pay. So it's important to be able to have the ability if using a cryptocurrency to maintain privacy. A really big one is international remittances. So this is where people go to different countries that are better off economically and work and then send the funds back to their family or other people in their home country. Very few people, well, less than half of the adults, um, have a bank account uh, in different parts of the world. Certainly uh, almost no children or teenagers have a bank account even though they're part of, or a contributing part of the economy. And Whenever remittances are sent through the traditional currency system, uh, there's high fees and uh, people all through the process have to be trusted so that it turns out that people can see where those uh, funds are sent. Uh, 
I notice on these graphs that I have right here, uh, I, I see very few international remittances going to countries in Africa. And uh, maybe that means that it's more difficult to do or, or I'm not really sure why that is. Y'all probably have more information about that. So right now it's possible to send a private payment with Zen today. So Zen, so Zen is the currency of Horizon. It has do two different types of addresses and uh, different types of transactions that are on one blockchain. So an easy to use address, a transparent address, it, which is just like Bitcoin, that's the type that's on the Coinomi wallet, or that's the type on, that's on other lightweight wallets. We're gonna work in the future, probably in six to 12 months to be able to have uh, addresses on a mobile device that are private. So we're working towards that. So the shielded address is a fully private or anonymous address. Uh, if I use a, a full wallet, I could send uh, using a shielded address, Zen, to any of y'all and you wouldn't see what address it came from. It's recorded on the blockchain, is limited in the amount of Zen that are created, but you wouldn't see it. And uh, so you can have been able to do that for over a year and you can do that today. So Zen is a little bit different or Horizon is a little bit different than some of the other cryptocurrencies out there that are mineable. 70% of the new Horizon that's created, there's going to be about 21 million, there's going to be 21 million Horizon that are created. There's already about 5 million that are in existence and every month about 200,000 new Zen are created. 70% of those go to the cryptocurrency miners. 10% of those go to the treasury, which is funds that are spent uh, on the, by the um, Zen Blockchain Foundation, which is our, uh, that's our um, nonprofit foundation that pays the developers and marketers and other people like that. 20% goes to people that run nodes. Uh, and nodes are what your wallets connect to. It's important to have the nodes up and running. We're also we're working to change so that the decisions on where the treasury funds are spent are decided by the people that own Zen. It'll be using liquid democracy. There's different types of voting and uh, one is direct democracy where everybody votes. Another is representative democracy where representatives are chosen. But with liquid democracy, um, you can either vote directly or you can tell the system to follow the vote of another specialist uh, in that specific uh, in that specific area. We have more nodes, I think, than any other cryptocurrency out there. So I believe we have more than 22,000 nodes right now. And you can see on this map of the world where the nodes are. Uh, looks like we have some just off the coast uh, there. And um, uh, we want to get nodes into every country of the world because if a country decides that they want to block access to Horizon uh, at, from the internet, and if there's nodes that are in the country that can be connected to, then Horizon can continue to be used uh, even as long as they can connect to a node in the country. There's many different parts of the ecosystem that go into place for Horizon. There's certainly volunteers, people that develop software, let other people know about it. We have our nonprofit foundation. We have partnerships with different businesses for including in point of sale systems, wallets, other applications. Certainly we have people that use uh, Horizon all over the place. We have the people that mine uh, that, that run the, the mining system and the node operators. And then we have investors into the system as well. Um, we try to bring Horizon to people all over the world. And by doing that, uh, in a lot of cases, it helps to meet with people locally uh, and show them how to use it, to meet with vendors, uh, to meet with different uh, businesses and cryptocurrency and Horizon is a worldwide phenomenon. So we recognize that and work to translate everything that we do into different languages and uh, enable the cryptocurrency 
use in all sorts of different languages as well. We have a roadmap and we're going quite well along it. We launched and were listed on an exchange. We immediately added some privacy features. We uh, added a second wallet and then started paying people to operate Zen nodes. Our partnership with IOHK has started for some technical advances. Um, and we're con we have a, a path and many different things that are planned on our roadmap. We have a good team of developers and marketers and we have funding. So you can expect to see that we're gonna continue to work well um, here over time. And you're gonna see things come out that are better and better from Horizon. Now we did have some issues. Um, cryptocurrencies are, are new and Horizon's new as well. Um, we've had our system already be attacked uh, from the beginning. The price has gone up and down, which means that it's hard to plan uh, for how much we can pay to our team every month. Uh, sometimes we've had too much activity on the network, so we've had to fix that. And we even had a 51% attack for you people who are familiar with 51% attacks. Um, the, but we came up with a fix for that as well. So we have uh, excellent um, engineers and chief architect. And we just last month, we uh, implemented protection against 51% attacks. So that's very helpful. Um, like I talked about, we previously, we're, we have some improvements that we're putting into place. We always have different improvements. We have not put the treasury and voting system into place yet. We are going to do that. Um, we are right now, the way that we track and pay the different nodes is central. And with any type of cryptocurrency to be more reliant, we wanna have the different elements of it be decentralized. So we're working to do that. Uh, and then additional applications. So side chains, uh, which is a somewhat technical um, cryptocurrency implementation is, is in progress. Uh, and we're working to change to from a blockchain to a block DAG, which would improve uh, time. So you'd see the funds transfer much more quickly. I'm not gonna talk too much about side chains, but we did just release a white paper that talked about how we're going to implement the side chains. And this lets people develop applications on top of the Horizon blockchain. Uh, it'll allow us to do the different applications that we need uh, better and then allow for third party applications as well. So here's a picture of our new wallet that we haven't come out with yet. Um, we will be soon. Uh, we're still testing it. Uh, I got a chance to test it and demo it this weekend when I was at the Texas Bitcoin conference. Uh, it has a very nice user interface uh, and it's a beautiful design. It also is able to do the tr uh, regular transactions and the shielded transactions. And our goal is to make our applications easy for people to use of all ages and uh, look for specific use cases like international remittances or where people like to have private payments first and then extend the capability uh, further beyond that. We have two different ways that merchants can accept Zen uh, at their point of sale, so at their counter. Um, one of them is an application called AnyPay uh, and another is uh, Paytomat. So these are two different ways. You can see Horizon here on the, on the AnyPay um, that if you know someone who's a merchant and you wanna get them to be able to accept cryptocurrency, these are two different applications that can help them to accept cryptocurrency uh, for their day-to-day -day, uh, things. So that's part of what we do to work to create cryptocurrency ecosystems where people get paid in Zen and then they pay other people in Zen, they can buy things with Zen, and it just continues in a good overall uh, ecosystem fashion. At some point, then you won't need to use whatever your local country's currency is uh, unless you need to pay taxes. Most countries like to have their taxes in their local currency. So there's different ways to get involved with Horizon. Uh, certainly we have a community with a Discord that you can um, join uh, and the Discord has language specific channels uh, as well as uh, assistance on the wallets, uh, assistance and uh, so it's a very active community. We have a forum, you can 
if you're a miner, uh, you can mine. Uh, right now, it looks like the best way to be a miner is to buy uh, ASIC mining equipment, so purpose-specific mining equipment. There's, I, th I know of two companies in China that make those right now. If you end up getting some Zen, uh, at least 42 Zen, you can run a node. And you don't need to have hardware. You can rent a server um, uh, on a cloud server. And uh, that gives you uh, new Zen that you get uh, every day. And you can do that if you want to have a bigger node, a super node, you have to have a more powerful system, um, but you can uh, get more Zen that way as well. And of course, just crafting a Zen ecosystem, being uh, the leader in your community to show people how to use Zen, show, talk to them about why privacy import is important and how uh, liberty is enabled by privacy. So that's the overview of Horizon. Um, I know the connection's kind of going in and out, so hopefully you're able to see the presentation slides, but I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has uh, any questions. All right, uh, we have uh, one question here. Sure, go for it. Right, so the question, I, as I understand it, is that there's three ways to make money uh, with for Horizon. There's um, now you said staking. It's not really staking. It's um, you have to run a node, uh, and there are instructions on on how to run a node. Uh, so maybe I can show you on the Horizon website uh, where this is. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen again, and I'll uh, I can show you. Uh, give me one second, and I'll do this. Um, I can show you the different ways to earn Zen. So, so if you go to the uh, Zen website, uh, I think I'm sharing this now. Um, you can certainly uh, stay up to date with uh, with the pro with the project. But there's ways to earn Zen. So if you look here. And click on Earn Zen. There's mining. There's secure nodes. There's super nodes. You can get a little bit of Zen for free from the Zen faucet, um, or you can look at submitting a proposal. So let's talk about those different things. So the Zen faucet is a place where, if you want to experiment and learn with Zen, you can get a little bit. Um, you go to the Get Zen and you put in your address and you can claim some Zen. And here you can see the different Zen that's been claimed. It's not a lot, but it's a, uh, it's a good way to start. Another way is to go to our forum and um, make a recommendation for something that you wanted to do. We look at this regularly and if someone has an idea and they have um, a project and payment milestones, uh, we look at funding these different um, activities on the forum. A third way is to uh, run a secure node um, or to run a super node and these are part of what keeps things up and running just like I said in the presentation and you can get instructions on how to set up a secure node from our uh, community guidelines. So there's there's instructions on how to set up a node here. Um, and then there's mining. And so from the mining, you can, if, if you're a cryptocurrency miner, you used to be, you can still mine using graphics cards, um, but there's many different mining pools that you can connect to. And uh, then you need to buy some mining uh, hardware to, to do that. But yes, there are different ways to earn Zen. And one of the ways that sometimes people overlook is to offer their own services in Zen to other people. So if you know somebody that's running nodes or you know somebody that has some Zen, or uh, then you can, uh, and this applies to any cryptocurrency, not just Zen. Um, uh, for example, at the, um, at the fitness, uh, place that I go exercise. I pay them in Zen. 
Uh, and so they're fitness specialists. They're not miners or they're not uh, node operators. Uh, they're not developers or graphic artists or anything like that. They are fitness trainers, coaches, but I pay them in Zen. And so they're able to earn cryptocurrency that way. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to ask you before you finish up, can I see some of the other people that are there? Can you turn the right. camera around and uh, show me who I was talking to? <laughs> oh, wow. That's a good crowd of people. Hello. Thank you for listening to my presentation. That's a good group you have there. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your interest. Thank you. Sani, thank you very much for setting this up. This is wonderful. Um, All right. Uh, uh, the, the room for not even contest. And uh, I'm happy to uh, send Zen for every person that has a, an address or, or a wallet. Did, did you? Um, so just like we talked about them, for everybody who has a Zen address or has a, has a wallet, um, yeah. I'll send them some Zen and maybe you can have the whole list of uh, addresses and I'll send Zen to each person who came. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you get the total number? Yeah, so let me know. Yeah, so let, tell me everybody who attended and I'll send each person Zen into their, their, their wallet. And if anybody oh, we'll does- We'll make a head count, sir. We'll make a yeah. head count. Yeah, and then maybe you have a, a spreadsheet or something that you can share with me afterwards and I'll go through and I'll send some to everybody, to each of their own wallets. Hopefully you've had a chance to show people how to set up a wallet. Well, again, thanks for your interest and, and hopefully that we can do this again. Okay, sir. Yes? The number of participants, there are 95 in number. There are some people outside still waiting, waiting. The, the hall could not contain. Okay, I'll also send no. you, I'll send you a recording of this also so that people can download and see the recording on YouTube if they want to. Okay. All right, sir. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you very How much. How do we get the Zen? When are you sending the Zen? Hello? Uh, yeah. So uh, send me the, uh, the address of each person, and I'll send the Zen to each person, and then I'll also send uh, the recording. And so I'll do that here in the next day. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Great. Thank you very much. I'll chat with you later, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Goodbye.